Hi there everyone, welcome to Tech Travers. Finally, I'm back with another Steam Deck emulation tutorial. The devs over at Emudeck has released their latest version of the extremely popular emulator installer slash wizard for Steam Deck, Emudeck version 2.1 and a lot have happened since the last time we did one of these videos. So in this video, we're diving straight into how to set up emulators on your Steam Deck and how to add games so you can start gaming straight away. The Steam Deck I'm gonna use for this tutorial has been factory restored, so if you just received your Steam Deck, you should be up and running with emulation in no time if you just follow my steps. But if you're updating from an earlier version of Emudeck, this tutorial will go through that as well. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Now, there are a few things we need to address first. First of all, I'll be utilizing a 1TB micro SD card for storing all my games, although you have the option to use a smaller capacity card as well. You may also choose to store your games directly on your Steam Deck's internal storage, but personally I prefer external storage. It's worth noting that games for newer systems such as the Wii U and PlayStation 2 can occupy a significant amount of space on your storage, so I recommend using at least a 128GB card, but ultimately the choice is yours. Secondly, you will also need one of these USB hard drives or a simple USB thumb drive containing all your game files aka ROMs as well as your BIOS files. I have a fancy Mandalorian hard drive with all my games on it. And with that being said, I'd like to take a moment to address the most frequently asked question that I've received on YouTube over the past year, and that is, where do I get the ROM files, or where do I get the BIOS files? But you need to know that both ROMs and BIOS files are protected by copyright, and I cannot provide a detailed explanation on how to obtain them. However, there are two options available. First, you can use various methods to dump your own purchased games, which is in no way illegal. Alternatively, you can use Google to search for assistance, and you will find several sources that can guide you on this matter. And as the Steam Deck features only one USB-C port, you'll require a USB-A to USB-C adapter to connect your external drive to the device. Alternatively, you could opt for one of the available Steam Deck docking stations that will enable you to plug in the drive directly via the USB-A port, should you want that. Speaking of docking stations, I will use one in this tutorial simply because I want to use a mouse and keyboard when I'm setting everything up, but you could do all of this directly on your Steam Deck if you want to. Now then, once you have all your accessories ready and you're ready to begin with the installation process, hit the Steam button on your Steam Deck, scroll down to power and from there select switch to desktop. And before you do anything else, make sure to insert your micro SD card in your Steam Deck. It's essential to do this before starting the Emudeck installation as the installer will create a folder structure on the card that we will use when we add games later on. And for this part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you my Steam Deck view instead. And right when you have reached your desktop, open up your preferred web browser. For the majority of you, this will likely be Firefox. Navigate to emudeck.com and select the download link located at the top of the page. Click on the big button that says download the Emudeck installer, click OK when prompted and the download will be complete in a second. Open your downloads folder and drag the file you just downloaded to your desktop. When you have done that, close down your browser, start the installer and you will be prompted with another warning. Just click continue and the setup process will start. As the installation process begins, you will be given two options. The first is an easy mode that will take care of everything for you. However, in this tutorial, we'll be selecting the custom mode so that we can have more control over our actions. On the next page, you're given the option to install everything on your SD card, the internal storage of your Steam Deck, or a custom directory, like an external SSD or something. I'm going for my SD card in this tutorial. On the following page, you will be able to select which emulator you want to install. Simply click on any emulator that you don't want to install and they will be grayed out. I'll be installing a few emulators that I think will be necessary, but don't worry, you can install and uninstall them at any time later. If you want to learn more about what each emulator does, check out the emulator deck wiki which I will be linking to in the video description. On the next page you can choose whether or not to let Emudeck configure the emulators for you. Same process here, if you for some reason don't want Emudeck to configure an emulator for you, click on it to leave it be. However, it's recommended to let Emudeck do its job. Next it will ask you if you want to configure autosave on or off. What that means is that if you turn it on, the listed retro systems will save the game before you close it, so that when you open the game next time you will be continuing exactly where you took off. 
And the next page is pretty cool. Emutech can configure retro achievements for you. So if you get a login from retroachievements.com, which is totally free by the way, you will have a trophy system in your retro games, just as if they were from the modern age. This is a great way to go back and get some more value out of your old favorite games. Next page will ask you whether to have bezels or not for some of the older systems that you might want to emulate. This will add neat bezels to fill out the black borders that will otherwise occur on the games that didn't have a wide aspect ratio back in the days. And speaking of which, the following pages let you choose the aspect ratio of said systems. And if you're installing emulators for newer systems like N64 and GameCube, you will also have an option to apply widescreen hacks. Additionally, you can choose whether or not to apply filters that enhance the appearance of your retro games to make them look more like the originals. These options regarding aspect ratios, widescreen hacks and filters are mostly a matter of personal preference. You can choose what you like based on the examples provided. However, it's important to note that some widescreen hacks might cause minor glitches in the game, which may or may not be bothersome to you. If you chose to install Emulation Station, you will also have the option to choose which theme it should have. Emulation Station is basically a front end that will gather every single ROM that you have under the same launcher in your Steam library. So if you don't want all your games to be visible in the library, you can use Emulation Station instead. And finally, on the next page, Emudeck will display a summary of all the settings and options that you have chosen. If you're satisfied with the selections, click on the blue Finish button and wait for the installation process to complete. The installation takes a couple of minutes and when it's done you can check so that all the emulators you wanted actually were installed. And if they weren't you can of course install them later. Next page will help you with transferring your games to the correct place on your Steam Deck. What it basically does is when you plug in a USB thumb drive it will create a ROM and a BIOS folder on it. Then you take it out and mount it to your PC and fill the ROMs and BIOS folder with your files. Then when you take it out and insert it back to your Steam Deck, Emudeck will help you transfer everything to the correct place. And while it sounds nice to get this help from Emudeck, we will skip it in this tutorial so we can do it manually instead. And once all that is done, we will be taken back to Emudeck's start page. This is all new in the latest version and from here we can do a lot of stuff. And before we add some of our games, let's check out some of the options and tools that we have here. Under quick settings, we can change the aspect ratios and filters etc that we chose earlier. And under manage emulators we can install and uninstall emulators that we want or don't want anymore. You can also choose to install emulation station if you forgot that earlier. And down here we also have a bunch of tools and stuff that might enhance emulation on Steam Deck by quite a lot. However, they're all pretty advanced and not really something you should dip your toes into if you're new to emulation. But I will install a few of them and then I'll just come back with a future video where I can go through the more advanced options as well. Now would be a great time to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already by the way and also hit that stupid bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. These plugins and tools also require that you set a pseudo password on your Steam Deck. If you haven't set one already, Emudeck will help you create one. Now one last thing, if you click the thumb drive icon in the bottom right corner, you will see all the different storage options you have plugged in. If you open your SD card, mine is called primary and so is probably yours, you will see that Emudeck has created these folders. If you go inside emulation, you will now see a few more folders. In the BIOS folders, you should put all the BIOS files that you might need. Not every emulator needs BIOS files, but some, like PS1 and PS2, does need BIOS files to work. This will also be covered in the Emudeck wiki that I mentioned earlier and there you can also see the name of the BIOS files if you want to google them. You will also have the ROMs folder here containing a lot of folders named after different systems and consoles. In these folders you will put all your ROM files. But now it's definitely time to add our games. So insert whatever device you have with all your game and BIOS files. Personally I have this 2TB Mandalorian drive where I have stacked all my games and BIOS files from before. Once inserted it will pop up in the right corner named as external, whereas primary in this list is the name of my SD card. Click on your external drive and open with the file manager. It might also say mount and open if you haven't done it before. The rest is actually as simple as drag and drop. Drag game files aka ROMs from your external drive to your SD card. I'm gonna start with some of my favorite games from Wii U. 
And remember to copy your game files and not cut and then paste, because if you do you will remove them from your external drive. But I'm gonna assume that you want to keep them there as well for later use. And depending on what you choose to copy from your external drive to your SD card, this is by far the most time consuming during this whole process. So go grab a coffee or something and then get back when all the files have been transferred. Once all your ROMs and BIOS files are in the correct folder, there is one more thing I want to show you before we use Steam ROM Manager to add our games to Steam Deck's gaming mode, and that is BIOS Checker. This is actually going to look through the BIOS folder on your SD card or the directory you chose to install everything and make sure that you have BIOS files for the emulators you installed. I only transferred BIOS files for PS2 as that's the only system I'm going to play that needs BIOS files, and as you can see it seems to work fine. Alright, time to use Steam ROM Manager to add all the games we want visible in our Steam library from the gaming mode. And if you have been using your Steam Deck's controls and not the mouse and keyboard for all of this, please note that Steam ROM Manager will temporarily remove the trackpad's clicking functions. Instead you use L2 and R2 as left and right mouse clicks. And on this first page, you choose which systems you want to create a folder for or collection as it's called in your Steam library. Emidec will then scrape box arts for all these games and make it look as if it's a game you downloaded from Steam itself. And once you have chosen your systems, click on Preview and then on Parse. Emudec will now scrape all the box art for you. You can swap box art as you like, but if you're happy with the result, you can just hit Save to Steam. And once you have done that, don't touch anything until you see a message confirming that you are done adding removing entries in the top corner. And now we're finally ready to check in gaming mode what we have achieved. So close everything down and hit return to gaming mode on your desktop. From here, click the Steam button on your Steam Deck and go to the library. And here you will now see all the games that we have added to the library using Steam ROM Manager. And it looks absolutely great if you ask me. And that's actually been it for this updated emulation tutorial on Steam Deck for 2023. I wanted to keep the video as short as possible and as easy to use as possible for those of you who are new to emulation on Steam Deck. So there are tons of tweaks and settings that I left out that will come in a future video for more advanced users. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know if it helped you out. Catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.